Praise Jesus. Um, so today's message is, what is Christmas all about? Um, shall we pray, Lord? We need your message, especially right now in this moment. We need you to speak to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Um, and I have to refer to this very popular Christmas, um, can I say a movie? Um, and uh, Charlie Brown, I have to get back to this one. Anybody watch this? It's almost become a ritual of Christmas to watch it. Just somehow when we get bored and we are wearing pajamas and, um, and, and, and smelling all the wonderful food, and I will pop up this and watch one more time. Charlie Brown just said, um, I don't understand. Stand Christmas, yes, I, I like get presents and sending Christmas cards and decorating trees and all that, but I still not happy. I always end up feeling depressed. <laughs> this is a typical Charlie Brown, very honest, um, self-talking. Um, and then his friend, Lina <laughs> said, Charlie Brown, you are the only person now who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem. Maybe Lucy's right. Of all the Charlie Brown in the world, you are the Charlie Brownest. Okay, I don't know whether you and I are the Charlie Brownest. And it's a season, and, but putting in today's context, I understand. I think I'm more like Charlie Brown <laughs> this year than the Linus. At, 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 uh, the pandemic and the year like this, all the uncertainties, the division and things are going on. And this story just come out. And um, then, of course, Charlie Brown went to his usual advice sessions from Lucy playing, uh, they call this um, Lucy's psychiatric uh, booth. <laughs> um, and then Lucy just gave um, advice to Charlie Brown, you need to be involved in something. And the school play needs a director, hopes to find meaning in the involvement. And oftentimes when we really get into a situation like Charlie Brown, Christmas is coming, the season is upon us, and we just get busy. We just to go shopping, cooking, preparing something to get our attention uh, away from what's most important, right? And we try to use performance, doing, job, duty, try to cover up what's really inside of us start become feeling like empty. Sometimes we don't even know what the meaning of all this. And um, yes, Charlie Brown took the advice, became the director on the, in the, uh, of the school play, uh, and it didn't go very well. And, and we remember this one? Lucy wants to be the queen. <laughs> the music was too jazzy instead of Christmassy. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas. And the d dusting room ruins, you know, uh, uh, Brenda's curly hair. It's, it's a mess. And, and <laughs> I look at the political situation today, it's a mess. It's, it's a school play. Um, used to be uh, people who are on both sides of the aisle, they come to play anyway. If there's something, there's something in common. But right now, it's so hard to find something in common. And you can see this thing happen. And it could from the nation's level all the way down to family levels. What restaurant to eat? What kind of Christmas we want? <laughs> uh, should we have friends over? And, 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 and it doesn't solve the problem. And um, so it's even worse. Charlie Brown and his friend tried to get a small Christmas tree. And everybody laugh at them because they look at the tree is small, unworthy, ignored. See, everybody just laugh at what he's doing. Do you feel like that sometimes? 2020, you and I try the best to finally find a Christmas tree. Maybe uh, a career, maybe job, or find a new season. And when we look back, and we think it's pretty good. We finally get a tree, Christmas tree for this season to celebrate. Or you raise up children up, you pump all your energy into it, and it's supposed to be a season to celebrate. And yet, you feel like, wow, <laughs> what did I get? And, and this is a season like that. 
um, what is Christmas all about? Hmm. And that really make, make, made me think. So I want to bring you to how this movie bring the answer to it. Isn't there, isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. That's what is Christmas all about. This Charlie Brown Christmas was aired on December 9th, 1965 on CBS. Anybody who have been to, through 60s? <laughs> you saw on that day. How, well, I shouldn't say how old were you, but um, but if you look at 60s, 60s was tension-filled decade. If you look at today and you think that we have enough, we have seen everything, but you haven't seen what happened in 60s. Going through the Cold War, there's a real foreign enemy that's tried to get to this nation. Civil rights movements. Um, and, if I recognize some of the pictures, war on poverty, which is really rampant around this nation, and the United States was facing many changes and authorities, including the church. Church were challenged at that time and re examined. And this was aired on December 9th. And when it was first aired, CBS, the media company, was not particularly thrilled about the TV movie, in particular about the religious message. They don't want this. It's like the answer to this decade of division, instability, uncertainty for the future was this little, what's his name? With a blanket, Linus. This little Linus, not even Charlie Brown, get the carpet up there and recite a so-called religious message. The media people didn't like it, but the area anyway, it was a huge success. Almost half of America's television turned tuned to into the half hour program, including you, right? right. Henry, it was the answer. It's an answer from this scripture, which I like to invite you to read that aloud with me. I'm going to share three points about what the Christmas is all about. And I believe this is what the Holy Spirit would like to whisper into you and my heart today. And uh, can we read that together? It's from Luke 2, 8 to 11. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of God stood over the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Continue. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And continue, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saving, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And that's what Linus was reciting on the stage plainly from New King James Version. He did a little bit variation on that, but that voice I can't mimic. It's just wonderfully presented from a child, a childlike face. It was the an answer to that generation. Half population tuning in to listen. That's why even today people watch it. Because that probably brought a tranquil, peaceful, not even just a mindset, a supernatural fruit from the Holy Spirit that through this obedience of this movie maker and into household in that time. So I want to share three things what Christmas is all about. The first thing is all about love. Can you turn to your neighbor and say love? It's more than just gift giving. It's more than just taking a break to you have spend time with family. Those are good things. It's more than the love of food, <laughs> love of family, love of traveling experience, you know, go out, love of saving so we can actually save up and buy gift. This is beyond just love from a human or humanity. What makes the Christmas special and so unique is that very special love makes Jesus giving up a sovereign position. It starts with Jesus who is God, and he was with God. And at that moment, 2,000 years ago, he was willingly giving up a sovereign position. And, and this really, really transcending every love in this world. And Luke 2, 12, 14. <laughs> and you could see that to a point he came as a baby, innocent baby, helpless baby, swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. It's a sign. You know, and oftentimes I wish Jesus came just fully born like Superman. Have you ever seen Superman when Superman came? He was born as a baby already. Anybody watch a movie? He didn't have to go through mother's womb. He's like, like womb. <laughs> if you know some of the Chinese uh, legends, like the, the, the super monkey. <laughs> and it came in just well formed. <laughs> didn't have to go to the, the very small stage of human being called embryo, the very early stage of life. If that's the case, it's easier for me sometimes to preach the gospel, say, hey, Jesus is different. He was not born out of the woman. He was there. <laughs> See, he's God. It's probably easier for me to preach, <laughs> to convince the world that he is God. But instead, he chose to completely humbling himself, give a complete sovereign position that he's coming so humble not even as a helpless baby, he went, he went through as a very, very humble beginning of life forms. As part of that, God breathes life and God blessed and reiterated one more thing, that life starts even before we were born into the earth. Life start at the very beginning is a mysterious stuff, how the life start to start. <laughs> but at the same time, you can see God give up his sovereignty completely in contrast. That very beginning form of life is precious. That's why Jesus didn't even want to give up that. <laughs> he said, let me partake. Let me participate in that very humble position. 
So when we look at this picture about a baby wrapped in a swaddling clothes, I want you to understand even before that baby was born, Jesus was in Mary's womb for 10 months. 10 full months and when and, and when mary visit uh, uh, her cousin and when there's two pregnant women <laughs> cousin to cousin <laughs> they face each other and you see the holy spirit was working so the first thing that the christmas is all about is the work of the holy spirit the work of holy spirit is blessing those babies in the womb and they rejoice when they see each other those were lives one life is Jesus, another life is John the Baptist. Is a, but Jesus complete taking that form, giving up his sovereign position to be with us. That's the first love. So the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you know, the first thing is, nine fruit, the first is love. And that's a supernatural gift. God wants to give it to you through the work of the Holy Spirit. Even John Baptist, you know, just rejoice, you know, before you came in, you know, the baby in my womb rejoice. So I pray when you face this baby <laughs> called Jesus and he's willingly give up his sovereign position as God, it's a sign. It's a sign to you, Emmanuel. God is with us at the very beginning, not just a death. Western Theology puts so much emphasis on the death, which is wonderful. Yet, we have to put the same emphasis on the birth of Jesus, even before he was born. The baby in mother's womb is blessed with his supernatural love. I pray today, if some of you feel like I shouldn't be born, some of you feel like it was not fair the way I was born, or I was treated in even mother's womb, I have a good news for you. This is what the Christmas is all about. It's the one who created you. We got every privilege in heaven willing to give up that sovereign position as God to be with you even as you were in mother's womb. That's a supernatural fruit of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to touch you right now today, even you online, to just whisper that comfort into you and say, I am here with you, Emmanuel. I'm here. He's whispered to you. He's just channeling that his comfort into you from the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The love that make Jesus giving up a sovereign position in Philippians two six is give us a little bit deeper into it. Who, being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. And this this verse is in the in the in the in the hymn in the psalm in the poet poetic way when Paul wrote this. And if you look at it, the first part is being the very nature of God. The word used in Greek was called morph or morphe. That means morph into something. That means the outside seem to change, but the internal nature of that being is the same. So even though Jesus gave up his sovereign position as God, but something he retained with him is the deity of God, is who he is as God, and his natural, that, you know, God's character. And when the second thing I want to share with you is this supernatural of, of God's love. When it comes to you, the love coming, it comes with God's character, who he is. And this very moment of this time, I long for a love with character. I long to be embraced. I want to be with someone when they love, they love with character. 
And that's what Jesus showed to us. He morphed into a human being. He doesn't have the outer appearances that we can look upon him. Now, today's political figures or the movie star, they all have to look good, look strong, look, you know, beautiful. But Jesus came, the Bible says in Isaiah 53, he doesn't come, he didn't come with that appearances so we can really look up to him. And he came, you know, but something never changed is within him, the character. The character of God, He retained with Him. And my dear brothers and sisters, I pray that you and I start to have a hunger to have this love with character come into our hearts. I start to remember when the last moment I was with my 95-year-old father who, that's the very last moment of his life. And we as a family taking care of him for 18 days. We were all tired, and I look at his outlook appearances after 18 days fighting for his life. It's not him. He morphed into something else physically, but I still remember he couldn't talk, and he just gave me a sign. I know he said, get everybody to the cafeteria to eat because you haven't eaten for the night. That character in him never changed. He is a servant. He take care of family first. Even though he morphed into a physical form, I couldn't recognize. But I still see that love with character. Go eat. So as an elder son, I said, go eat, guys. Let me stay with daddy. That's a moment he pass away. Well, they came back in time to say goodbye. That's a love. And that's a love with character. How much I long for this for Christmas right now. People say they love you, they care for you, they fight for the love for this, for that. But how much I long for that love is backed by that never changing character inside. That's what Jesus was and is. And continue to say, Did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantages. Another translation, something to cling to, something to be grasped. And you see this word actually used in the Old Testament to describe Lucifer. <laughs> Lucifer has something to grasp. He was not satisfied with just a worship leader in the heavenly room. He was lifted up, but he said, I want to grasp. I want to cling. I want to be equal with God. And we want to call evil. Equal is not just social equality. Equal is not just like 60s about segregation. The true cause of evil is somebody want to grasp something so strongly that will not let go. Jesus came and he said he did not consider equality. He's willing to give up that position as God. What did he give up? He gave up. He can hold the whole world in his hand. But now, as a little baby, he couldn't even hold on to the finger of his mother's, his mother's finger. And this is from St. Augustine. He said he was created of a mother whom he created. He was carried by hands that he formed. He cried in the manger, manger in wordless infancy. He the word without whom all human eloquence is mute. How I long for the true love that come in with this character a willingly give up his position. Not just fight for the position, but giving up that position for you and for me. He abandoned that Soviet position. Rather, he made himself nothing. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. My dear brothers and sisters, if you give someone a job, and pay that person to do it, that person will do it. But if you want to test ultimately a person's character, is to give that person privilege. 
This society may give politician privilege, do we? We give movie star privileges. We give, I, I can keep going on. We give sometimes our next generation privileges. A person is ultimately test when given privileges. The character is being tested. Have you been given privilege? Jesus gave up his glory. As God, he, has, he can enjoy all the glory, the worship from the angels. Yet, he now came, and the only people came to worship him was shepherd boys. <laughs> yeah, there are three you know, wise men. Yeah, but just three of them. And if you look at the whole Jerusalem, was not at peace when they heard about him. The king himself was not at peace. He gave up his honor. He gave up his reputation. He came. Many years later, people probably think, oh, it's, where did Jesus really come? <laughs> and he's giving up all he, his power. His riches in heaven. He came as a very humble baby in the manger, and he couldn't even find a proper hotel room to stay. He made him nothing. That's what the Christmas is all about. He even gave up his independence to exercise his own will authority to a point he has come as a helpless baby. So I have, I've seen people say, Pastor Conley, did Jesus as a, uh, was Jesus as a baby ever crying? Of course he cried. So uh, for the, the wonderful silent night, I love it. But when he says it's like, like very peaceful, no crying, I don't believe that. <laughs> I believe Jesus cried on Christmas Eve, okay? I think he was just a baby like you and me. So he gave up that exercise, but ultimately he has to follow, become a slave and to our sins and in a way to submit himself to his father as a son of man. He gave up all this. And that's what the Christmas is all about. And the second part of it is joy. Remember the fruit of the Holy Spirit? The second one is, the first one is what? Love. The second one is joy. The second thing about Christmas is about a joy. Not the joy of getting gift. Anybody love to re love receiving gift? Oh, just Henry. Nobody else. High saving person, right? Um, and, and actually, all of us love getting a gift. Yes, people may like, oh, but you know, they love it. You know, gift is something. Yeah, gift brings joy. Anybody who loves Christmas, like turkey and food and candies, anybody? Oh, <laughs> joy is to shout out from afar. And the love of food, the joy of getting food. Anybody love the joy in Christmas? You can travel and see the world. Yeah, like people used to do that. And, and, but, but this joy is, is, is actually far exceed that joy. That's called happiness. But this joy in the original uh, Hebrew, if you translate that, is called kera. That means charisma. It means actually uh, something give you power from within. Let me try one more time. Joy, original means something give you power from within. So when you lose and I lose joy, there's no power. And no matter what's going on here today in this nation, we will not allow the devil to rob us away from our joy. Amen? And because that joy will enable us. And that's the same joy enabled Jesus because he took the form of fully human being. Jesus needs joy to go through his life. Jesus himself needs a joy that we also need the same joy to go through life. So that enabled Jesus to gladly accept a slave's position. And, and in that position, he approached us, sinful human beings. Um, and, 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 and in Philippians 2, 7, by taking the very nature of a servant. Now, this is different from the morph. Morph doesn't mean he gave up deity. I'm talking about incarnation, the theology here. And, and, and he keep his character and the nature of God. So he's fully God in that sense. And now the second thing, by the, taking the very nature of the ser servant, 
And, and, and being made in human likeness, when being made in human likeness is called schema, or the word we call schematic. So that means outside. So in this way, Jesus outside now take the form, like taking the clothes, taking another form, schematic outside of him, look like us. But inside is a servant heart. I call it servant king. And, and, and this, this joy is very simple. Why is gold deeper? It's ultimate form of joy to serve. What the Christmas is about? Jesus show us the joy for him to serve. He doesn't just he didn't just serve the people in a high place. He didn't just serve people who are useful to him. He didn't just serve the people in an elite position. He serves all men. And Christmas is about Jesus wanting so much to serve you and me. Or can I use another word? God so much want to serve you and me. He sent his own son. Actually, he's himself manifest in a different way to serve you and me. Christmas is all about serving, the joy to serve, not just to serve, serving. And, and, and I know um, um, the best way, I always use the analogy, I think it's, I bought it from, I borrowed it from uh, Billy Graham. I, I kind of turn it around a little bit like if you want to tell a group of ants how good the ice cream is or how good it, the Chinese bubble tea is, <laughs> you cannot just throw the bubble tea to them. You're going to flood them and kill them. <laughs> the bubble too heavy. The best way is you actually become ant. Go to their world and make an ants bubble tea and serve them. That's ultimately Jesus come as a human form. Is he so much want the joy is that he saw, he saw what we could become. He saw after he take care of the sinful nature that we have and we can be together with him. He already foresee that. And with that joy, he came to earth and say, here I am. I'm making that bubble tea called joy that I can share with you. That's what Christmas is all about. The joy to serve. I, I so much want to see that joy to serve come into this nation one more time. I, in the 60s, I don't know what happened, but somehow there's a revival right after that in the 70s. People start to feel with that willingness to serve. To serve the military, to serve in the government post, to serve in the school. I can give you all the movement that right after that. And, and, and it's somehow inspired by that division that, um, uh, Henry, how should I call the 60s? It's chaos. And, and somehow in the 70s, you start to see this. And I believe somehow, some way, the joy come back to this nation to serve. I so much want politicians now coming to serve, not to be served. I so much want to see politicians now. You don't just preach about social inequality you want to improve, but you live 25 miles away from the district that you serve, and you live in a three, four million dollar house. I so much want to see it's a season that we come. Matthew 20, 28, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom to many, for many. How can we preach the gospel in 2021? Serve. Serve the need of people, just like Jesus did. That's what the Christmas is all about. Have you ever been served by Jesus? Ultimately, this is the form of serving of Jesus. You see the cross on the right, and you see there's a dove as a symbol of the Holy Spirit coming from that death, the ransom to many. 
and that's in Hebrew says Hebrew 12 2 fixing our eyes on Jesus can you repeat that with me fixing my eyes on Jesus one more time fixing my eyes on Jesus some of you may watch things YouTube and all the news around I understand but can I invite you right now in the Christmas fixing your and my eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith for the set before him he endured the cross the cruelest death that's ever scorning his, his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of god he became the man son of man so that he can bring the sinful man to be sons and daughter of god and i want you to see this ultimately jesus saw you in the joy why he is able to serve with joy because he foresee the fruit of the ultimate joy it is you he delights in you you know he knows the sinful nature in us yet he know by his blood and his cross we are able to sit on the throne with him and become the overcomer more than the overcomer turn to your neighbor your neighbor say you are more than the overcomer just say that you are more than a conqueror you are the overcomer you are the overcomer that come with joy amen hallelujah and that's a joy jesus wants to share with you and that's the fruit of the holy spirit working in the first christmas is to bring ultimately this joy called kara is a joy enabled you to work enable you to have power to face any challenge in your and my life that's what christmas is all about fixing your eyes on jesus hallelujah and the next one the final one i'm going to wrap up oh well one more oh final one oops <laughs> peace can you turn to your neighbor and say peace peace one more time peace um the son of man ascends to be the supreme princess you may think jesus came humbly as a baby he died even more as a criminal almost like criminal i shouldn't call criminal as a, a lamb of god seemingly like a criminal on cross yeah i want to really bring you to a key word in the bible that we all misunderstood oftentimes um and the king was born it's not just a humble baby in that manger in that place he was born king and Luke 2 14 as we just read glory to God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill toward you and me favor toward you and me only king can give favor you and I right now the Christmas need a favor from this king let me explain this very misunderstood word in the Bible called the son of man and Jesus oftentimes referred to himself son of man ascend to be the supreme princess and we also think some of man is like oh Jesus 100% human yes that's definitely the original meaning of that and he's also called the son of God and these two we think some of God represent more like a heavenly realm he is a king he is a he's God from heaven we think son of man is so earthly he's like a baby he is a competent son he has to learn his skill he has to be trained and um and and we think this like divide into two rim actually these two are intertwined like son of man so Jesus talked to some of the Israel people say you are the are you the sons of Abraham when we say son of God means we are earthly men and women and we take our heavenly father's character so even though we Jesus are called son of God it's actually also refer to that example that he will bring us to follow his heavenly father's character on the contrary the son of man is a heavenly turn too 
And you could see the incarnation intertwined of why Jesus was born as a country person, human baby. And it's so hard for us to understand version gave birth to a baby. Yet, if you put into the context, it's coming from the Bible. And let me just continue reading in Philippians 2a. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted himself to the highest place. It gave him the name that is above every name. And you could see the, 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 the humility of Jesus coming is to really, so that he will bounce back to where he belongs. But by doing this bouncing back from the death, and from the helpless baby to born as a king, he brings us along. And, and if you see, this is on the cross, he finally said, it is finished. In John 19, 31, what is finished? We call salvation is finished. Jesus doesn't say what is finished. He said finished. It's this complete loop. This is a complete cycle of the, the, the eternal joy that God, the Trinity, God wants to share with you and me. And he's to come bounce back and ascend to be the supreme, the supreme prince in heaven where he is right now. And Holy Spirit is helping him, is trying to come up with that fruit of Holy Spirit called peace. So the peace, my dear brother and sister, is, is, is not like nothing happened. Peace is not like cordial. It's like, okay, good, we are nice. Peace is not just we speaking nicely to each other. Well, that's part of it. But the ultimate is supernatural peace come in a time of division, come in a time of poverty, that ultimately the peace can be found when we follow Jesus from the bouncing back route and come in to ascend with him, sit on the throne with God to do the perfect will of God. And we have to go through cross. The things of this world need to be taken care of. If we talk about all the good things, good deeds we want to do without talking about the sinful nature within us, that kind of thing will ultimately fail because you put sins of this world together. The sons and daughters of men, we have seen that for centuries. We are saved not by deeds, by His grace. And this is His finish. It's all by His grace. This supernatural peace is given to you and me. So the Son of Man in Daniel 7, 13, 14. I'll wrap up with one. This is very um, a very important meaning in the New Testament. When Jesus said, I'm the Son of Man. And Son of Man, He didn't refer to 100% just earthly aspect. If you look at Daniel 7, 13, 14, the Son of Man was mentioned in Daniel's vision in the heavenly realm. That means in heaven, there is a position for a person called Son of Man. Let me read that scripture to you. I want you to know Christmas is all about that peace, not just as a baby. The baby was born king. Daniel 7, 13, 14, And behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. Not son of God, son of man in the heavenly realm. And this son of man, he came to the ancient of days, the maker of the universe, God himself. He found son of man and was present, uh, presented before him. And as a gift, you see, the Son of Man presented as a gift. To him was given what? Dominion voting machine. No, I'm kidding. To him was given dominion. I'm prophesying right now. Uh, dominion voting machine used by 28 states in this nation. I'm just, I'm just throwing that in. And glory and a kingdom. 
and could see that this son of man belongs to heavenly realm. And all peoples, can you turn to your neighbor and say, all peoples? So Jesus was not just designated for Jewish people or white people or black people. And I talked to uh, a pastor, actually, Apostle Pastor Lenny, uh, about um, a lot of issues. And, and Joyce was with us, shall we also? And, and we talk about the social you know, justice and stuff like that. And, and he turned to me and he made this very funny comment. He said, Coach K, white people, black people, how about we brown people? <laughs> oh, I, was, I love his comments. <laughs> so he's right on. How about us brown people? If we want to go through issues, it's okay. But if you play identity, who we are, our color into that, we have to separate identity with issues. We can discuss issues, but we have to lay down our identity, just like Jesus did. Old peoples, turn to your neighbor and say one more time, old peoples. If anybody tell you Christianity are all for white people or for upper class people, for smart people, or, or Christianity also people who suffer, who are lower class, those are all lies. It's about all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. He's, instead, he chose to serve us instead of to be served. His dominion is an everlasting dominion <laughs> which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, um, one that shall not be destroyed. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, his kingdom shall not be destroyed. Let's say that one more time. One more time, his kingdom, one more time, his kingdom shall not be destroyed. We have all the policies going on right now, but what Christmas is all about is his kingdom. Amen? Are you ready to proclaim that with me? The Christmas is all about his kingdom. Let's do that one more time. The Christmas is all about his kingdom. One more time. The Christmas is all about God, your kingdom, and that kingdom is uh, empowered, is given to one person and one person only. Amen? The Son of Man. And that's what Jesus said, Son of Man will suffer in, in, in the hands of man. That's why he referred, when he said that, he's referring to the destiny of his mission here. And some of you, my dear brothers and sisters, no matter you're working, politics, education, business, entertainment, sports, uh, finances, businesses. If you build something without the son of man in you for his kingdom, no, big, no matter how big that thing can turn into, it's your and my empire. Jesus doesn't come to build an empire. The empire only serves king. He came as a son of God. That's what Christmas is all about, to serve us. So that's a kingdom of God. All right, so I'm going to wrap up here. Remember, Holy, Holy Spirit is an ultimate orchestrating the first Christmas. And as the whole story, the whole event taking place, it's a first taste of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The first one is love. Turn to your neighbor and say, love. Merry Christmas and love. And just say that. Merry Christmas. Love. Jesus gave up his sovereign position coming for you and me. If you have been in 2020, feel like you gave up something to serve and for kingdom of God. Some of you serve in this church, I want to thank you. I know this church, when we serve, is out of love. I can see that. This church doesn't look like a church, when we serve, we'll give fame, glory, power, authority. <laughs> but when you serve, you are here, I know, out of love. Some of you serve, and I don't see, but I start to hear the good fruit out of this year. You serve people who are in need. You serve people who are outside our church. 
I know this is the church we serve. And the first, second thing about joy of this season to serve. Jesus gladly accept a slave place to approach the sinners like you and me. And that's the joy ultimately will be able to help us not look at the sin, but look at what the salvation, redemption can do to you and me. And he is delight in you. And finally, it's a peace to the earth, to all of you, that the Son of Man ascends to the Supreme Princess, and that you wrap up these things that He is, has done for you and me. Hallelujah. Can I ask you, if you are at home too, still all stand up? And Zach, can I ask you come up to help do the small group? If you can, can still join us to do the small group? And uh, Henry, would you come up?